It seems pretty obvious that we shouldn't put poisons in our body, but it, these things are completely um, undiscussed or, un, you know, even though it's so simple, don't expose yourself to things that are toxic or poisonous because when you build up metabolic waste, and by the way, there's two types of wastes. There's endogenous wastes, which means the body is forming the wastes inside the body. And there's exogenous wastes, which means they're coming from the external environment. You're breathing it through cigarette smoke, forests, having a fireplace in your house. You're ingesting food that has nitrosamino compounds in them or, you know, or free ride. You're, you're eating food that has um, artificial flavors and pesticides and chemicals in them. So those are exogenous wastes that gets mixed up in the body with the endogenous weights that we build up because we're not getting in enough free radicals, we're not even getting enough anti, um, antioxidants to fight the production of free radicals. And we build up things like reactive oxygen species and something called advanced glycation end products build up in the tissue that are another type of toxins. Ammonia, lipofusion, you know, urea, there's a lot of the toxins that build up. But the main ones that cause it, like a diabetic to become, the diabetic retinopathy or kidney failure or nerve damage that age the body prematurely are advanced glycation end products and, and reactive oxygen species. Now this accumulated mix of toxins that are in the body, including microplastics and other endocrine disruptors, are all mixed together. And I'm saying here, that these toxins force overeating behavior and make a person become overweight. Number one, they make the fat cells swell and make the body hold more fluid to dilute the acidity, acidity and toxicity of the toxins. So you hold on to more weight and you have trouble losing weight because your body is toxic. But number two, you can't control the calories you eat because they make you now crave to eat food because you feel so fatigued and wasted and symptomatic with pain or inflammation or headaches, or shakiness, or agitation when the body is trying to remove the toxic load. The removal of the toxic load from the body causes symptoms that we call detoxification. And the body more effectively detoxifies when it's not digesting food in the non-feeding state. So the minute you stop digesting food and your body enhances detoxification, when your body has a large amount, a large toxic load, you're going to feel terrible when you're detoxing because you're in enhanced detoxification when your body's not digesting. Because the liver is not devoting itself to storing glycogen and working on bringing things in. It can work on breaking things down and, deconju and, and conjugating fat-soluble toxins so the little kid can be excreted in the urine or in the sweat or breathing them out. You know, so we, of course, itching skin, you know, um, fatigue, headache, stomach cramping, even, even inflammation of the lung, asthma, even all these symptoms people feel are still examples of how the body uses inflammation and utilizes extraordinary channels of elimination to get rid of toxins. And what people have to do is they have to eat more food because they're too wasted if they, they're too feeling too lousy if they don't, keep, they don't keep digesting going all the time. So the poor diet and the lack of nutrients, which then builds up more toxins, then leads to overeating behavior where the person feels too ill in the non-feeding state. You know, we want people to go be able to not eat and feel comfortable not eating food when they're not hungry. But most Americans, they never felt, they never felt hunger in their whole life because what they think is hunger, they think fatigue is hunger. They think headaches are hunger. They think stomach cramping and agitation is hunger and they eat in response to their poor diet, overeat in response to their poor diet. And that's why diets of all description fail because people don't address the quality of what they're putting in their body. They're just addressing calories and they can't willy-nilly cut back on calories without supplying the body with micronutrient adequacy and reduce the level of toxic wastes. So until we try to ingest these foods I want people to eat, like salads chewed very well and, you know, and berries full of, you know, the anthrocyanins that increase the detoxification. So in other words, unless you eat these foods that enhance detoxification and stop consuming all these toxic foods, you're not going to be able to eat, be comfortable eating less calories. And then people, because dieting doesn't work, and dieting, because people don't, attention, don't pay attention to nutritional excellence, doesn't work. They have to learn to accept the fact that they're overweight and can't lose weight. And now you have a whole series of thought processes where the person is addicted to food, 
has cravings for them, can't live without them, and they also can't lose weight and they, no matter what they do. So they have to just be resigned to being overweight lest they feel, you know, hopeless and give, and give up on the idea that they can ever be healthy.